Grace and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. This week I was reading about a village in Africa where everyone keeps sheep and they all know their sheep and give names to their sheep. It's not unusual in this village for someone to ask a fellow villager, have you seen my sheep so-and-so and then mention the sheep's name. And in the evening, it's not unusual to hear people calling their sheep by name as they seek to bring them in for, for the evening. These people know their sheep by name and the sheep know their owner's voices and they trust them and they come when they're called. This image is very similar to what Jesus is talking about when he's talking about him being a shepherd and us being sheep. He's living at a time when shepherds would be roaming the countryside with their small flocks. Each shepherd would know the name of his sheep and they would be looking after their sheep 24 hours a day. So during the day, the shepherd would use his voice, a rod or a staff, and by those means would lead their sheep to green pasture, to water, away from danger, and in the evening, lead them to a cave or a small, uh, a low walled enclosure, a pen to keep them safe for the evening so that nobody could steal them and they would be safe from wolves. When the evening did come, the shepherd would sit at the mouth of the cave or at the opening to the enclosure and effectively become the gate. And so Jesus uses both his images of being shepherd and gate. Being gate means protecting the sheep, keeping them safe, making sure that they cannot be stolen, cannot be killed, cannot be hurt by anyone. In the morning, the shepherd would open the gate and the shepherd would lead them out again for another day to look after them, to take care of them, to make sure that they were well fed. There's also another image in the uh, Bible which mentions shepherd. It's a, an image that comes from the Old Testament where the leaders of God's people are called shepherds. First of all, there's David. David was a shepherd who was called by God to become the shepherd of his people, of Israel, their king. And thankfully, David was a good shepherd. He kept his people safe. He looked after them and made sure that they had a generally good life. But as time went by, the shepherds of Israel, the kings of Israel, and the other leaders of Israel became corrupt. And instead of being there for their people and to protect their people, Instead, they began to use and abuse their people. And eventually, those shepherds lost control of Israel. And Israel was invaded. And many of the people, many of the sheep were stolen, were taken into exile, and now lived in exile away from their country and away from their temple and in slavery. So in Ezekiel 34, God mentions what these shepherds have done and what he will do. He says that there will come a time when he will become the shepherd of his people. God will be the shepherd of his people. God will find his people. He will rescue them. He will bind up their wounds. He will strengthen the weak. He will bring his people to justice. Jesus in John chapter 10, verse 11, just after today's reading says he is a good shepherd who lays down his life for the sheep in other words this is the same god who was speaking in ezekiel 34 jesus is god who has come to find his sheep he has come to rescue his sheep to bind up their wounds to strengthen the weak to bring justice to his sheep and he's even prepared to give up his life to do so and Jesus also mentions a little later on that he has other sheep that are not 
in the flock that he's discussing at the time, other sheep outside of Israel. Us, we are the sheep that Jesus has come to rescue. And at the same time, Jesus is the gate for the sheep. He is the one by whom we enter into God's flock. He's the one who lets us in and the one who goes out with us into the world. And both in and out of the sheep pen, he's always with us, protecting us, protecting us from those who would rob, kill and destroy. Jesus rescues us, not just to save us from sin, death and the devil, but to give us even more, to give us an abundant life. Now, quite often we think about what Jesus has done for us. And yes, he has won forgiveness of sins. He has paid the price for our sins. We are assured of an eternal future with him in heaven. But we also have a different life now. Jesus has saved us from sin, death and the devil, but he saved us for a new abundant life. An abundant life that is based on a new relationship with God, our creator. A life that impacts our personal relationships and a life where we are freed to live love by love and by grace. The love and grace that we first received through Jesus. He has saved us for a new life where our priorities and therefore our decisions and the way we live is impacted by a new way of thinking and a new way of being. Immediately before today's reading in chapter 9 of John, Jesus has healed a man who was born blind. And as a result of this healing, this man's life has changed completely. Suddenly he has a new independence and a freedom and he no longer has to beg for a living. Now he can become a full part of society because he lived in a society where unfortunately people believed if you had some disability, then you were an unclean sinner. Now he doesn't have this problem anymore. Now he can become, he has become a full part of society again. He has a much fuller life than he could have ever imagined. He has physical sight, but Jesus knows that he needs more. There is something more important even than physical sight, spiritual sight. So the first time the blind man met Jesus, he didn't see him. He left him with mud on his eyes to go and wash in a pool of water. Now, sometime later, Jesus meets this man again. This man sees him physically for the first time, but more importantly, he comes to faith. And he says, Lord, I believe. And he worships Jesus. Now he's become one of Jesus' flock. He had received spiritual vision and clarity. He's now received spiritual vision and clarity, and he can look forward to a life to the full. Jesus opens our spiritual eyes so that we recognize him as our God and Savior. He opens our ears so that we recognize his voice when he speaks to us through his word. He opens our hearts so that we receive him in faith and trust that he is our good shepherd. As we listen to him, we discover that he does not just save us from sin, death and the devil but he also saves us for a new way of living. Jesus is your good shepherd. He has called you by name to follow him in your baptism. And as you follow, he will lead you into an abundant life based on forgiveness and compassion. A life full of meaning, not based on what you can get, but based on what you can give a life of doing good, a life of love of God and love towards your neighbour. Amen.